Hello and welcome to our lecture. My name is Chris Gall and the lecture content is uh, written by me. So today's lecture is going to correspond to topic 1.2 in AP Human Geography. That's uh, geographic data in the College Board course and exam description version 1 effective 2019. The uh, enduring understandings for today's lecture are that geographers use maps and data to, to depict relationships of time, space, and scale. The learning objective for today's lecture is to identify different methods of geographic data collection. And the essential knowledge for today's lecture are that one, data may be gathered in the field by organizations or by individuals. Two, geospatial technologies including geographic information systems, GIS, satellite navigation systems, remote sensing and online mapping and visualization. And three, spatial information can come from written accounts in the form of field observations, media reports, travel narratives, policy documents, personal interviews, landscape analysis, and photographic interpretation. There's very little actual text on the accompanying slide, so don't worry if you're just planning to listen to the audio. You won't miss much. In class, I talk for a slide and allow my students to write notes about what they just heard to help them focus on hearing and to practice prioritizing information. I would strongly recommend that you pause the video or audio after each slide in order to finish your notes. When taking the notes, focus on the major ideas and not on writing down what I say verbatim, that is to say word for word. Instead, put it in your own language. This processing step will help you better learn and master the information and to retain it for the AP exam in May. And now, enjoy the lecture and I hope you learn a lot. So there are two major types of geographic data, or two major types of data really in general, no matter which field of study we're discussing, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative data are subjective. They are what people say they are. If I describe a day in my life, that is qualitative data. If you ask a random student at my high school what life is like at Todd Beamer, that is qualitative data. The response you get will vary from person to person, and it's not something that, be counted, that can be counted or quantified easily. Think of it as being descriptive, and descriptive from a specific point of view. This is not to say that qualitative data is bad. Qualitative data can be very useful if you're looking for descriptions of things, or to get a feel for why something somewhere is the way it is, or the history of its evolution and change ac across time. That is to say, the why, according to people. So quantitative data, on the other hand, are not subjective. They are absolute. Test scores on multiple choice tests are a great example of qualitative data. You got 17 out of 20 correct. It's an absolute. There's no negotiation about it. In geography, qualitative, quantitative data can look like the number of people who live in an area or the number of houses or factories in an area. It could be the number of people who answer a certain survey question a given way or the number of acres under cultivation. The important thing to note is that quali quantitative data, sorry I keep saying the wrong word there, quantitative data are things you can count. So their quantities. <clears throat> Geographic data can be gathered by individuals or organizations. It's important to note that the act of gathering geographic data is called fieldwork. And fieldwork can be either quantitative or qualitative in nature and depends on the on how the work is done and how it's completed. Okay. Um, quantitative data is often, though not always, gathered using geospatial technologies. And geospatial technologies include things like a geographic information system. Uh, GIS, by the way, if you're not familiar, is the uh, basically the creation of a series of layered maps that show different types of information. For example, one layer might show all of the houses in an area, another layer might show all of the parks in an area, a third layer might show where all the electrical lines are in an area. Okay. Um, satellite navigation systems are another example of geospatial technologies. GPS is the most is the example most people are familiar with for that. And remote sensing. And remote sensing is when you use pictures from planes or satellites to help map and map an area or to show some show a broader perspective. Okay. Additionally, there are some there are things like online mapping tools and visualization systems. Um, Google Earth is a great example of an online mapping tool, but there are plenty of others out there. Once gathered, the data is analyzed and then evaluated and typically inserted into some kind of a report for consumption by a given audience. For example, my wife works in environmental consulting and they do a lot of work cleaning up former industrial sites. Brownfields is the technical term. It's incredibly common for them to gather data 
data using a GIS system, looking for things like who owns which lot, where the groundwater drainage areas are, the locations of potential other responsible parties, and so forth. The information is then assembled into reports for their clients and regulators where they are demonstrating what is happening in a given ecosystem. Spatial information, that is to say information about a specific area in comparison to other areas, can come from a wide variety of sources including field observations by geographers or others, media reports, which is why you should watch or read the news, travel narratives, which are also sometimes called travel logs and can be a lot of fun to read, um, policy documents, similar to what I was saying that my wife puts together, or personal interviews with people in an area. Landscape analysis is another great example of spatial information, and to do that, you basically look at an area and see how it's changed across time or how a given change has affected the area. Right, so uh, if they put in a new Costco down the street from where I live, how does that change the traffic flows, for example? Okay, um, and the last one is photographic interpretation. So, in other words, it's not just what does the picture show, but what does the photo actually tell you about the area being portrayed? Sometimes pictures can absolutely be worth a thousand words. Um, over the course of the class, we'll be learning a lot about geographic and spatial information gathered from a wide variety of sources. As we go, you should look for ways to analyze and interpret the data so that it makes sense to you in light of what you know about a given area. Sometimes you'll find that what you know is correct and the information we learn will back that up. Other times you will find you have what Chimam Chimamanda Ngozi calls a single story about an area, and that you will need to expand how you think about the people and places in the world. She gives an excellent TED talk about it, by the way, that you can watch on YouTube called The Danger of a Single Story. The most important thing to remember is to question the data source and to be sure to use your own critical thinking skills to ask why things are the way they are. Specifically, why are things happening where they are and why are the outcomes different in one area than in another area of the world? Geographic data are what help us to demonstrate those differential outcomes of what's actually happening and then to link them to specific places and times. So the essential knowledge for this lecture is, a, so you'll want to check your notes and see if you've got information pertaining to the following, is that data may be gathered in the field by organizations or individuals. So for example, if you walk around with a cell phone, you gather tons of geographic data if you use location services. Um, Geospatial technologies include geographic information systems, satellite navigation systems, remote sensing, and online mapping and visualization. Spatial information can come from written accounts in the form of field observations, media reports, travel narratives, policy documents, personal interviews, landscape analysis, and photographic interpretation. Field observations, by the way, I think I forgot to define this earlier are observations done by geographers where they're out in a specific area and they're looking for, generally speaking, specific things. So for example, they might go to the Midwest United States and see how land is used by farmers. Which types of crops are they growing? Are they um, using mixed agricultural methods? Are they simply dairy farms? How are they using the information? Okay, so if you have any questions or concerns, I guess I will see you in class, and otherwise, uh, see you with the next video.